It's the final major of the PBA season, the prestigious Lumber Liquidators U.S. Open. And three past Open champions have made their way to today's Final Four. 2001 winner, Mika Koivu Niemi. 2006 champ, Tommy Jones, and your one seed, Norm Duke. Joining those heavyweights, Ryan Schaefer. No stranger to majors, this is his 12th major show, but he hasn't found the winner's circle yet, having come in second four times. Heavy lifting ahead for Schaefer, as these four try to earn a spot in bowling immortality. Zone, Carolier in North Brunswick, New Jersey, for the finals of the most challenging and prestigious event on the PBA Tour. We welcome you to the 68th edition of the Lumber Liquidators U.S. Open. Last night, right here, number four seed Ryan Schaefer struggled mightily to find the pocket early on, and he fell behind six seed and defending U.S. Open champ Bill O'Neill by as many as 46 pins. But then O'Neill lost the pocket, and Schaefer zoned in on it, dropping all three in the tenth to take his first lead of the match. O'Neill needing a mark in the tenth to move on. Left that split, could not clean it up, and Ryan Schaefer advanced with the 10-pin victory. And he will start off our show today versus the odds-on favorite to earn PBA Player of the Year honors. Your three-seed, Mika Koivu Niemi. Two-time major champ Tommy Jones is your two-seed. And on top, seeking his 34th career title, the legendary Norm Duke. Thrilled you're with us this afternoon from New Jersey. We have three current or former PBA Hall of Famers, or three current or soon-to-be PBA Hall of Famers on today's show, which lends further credence to the fact that this tournament continues to weed out the weak, and only the strong survive. And because this tournament is such a grind, you get a tendency to see the competitive juices and a hint of controversy appear more than you might see at a normal tournament. This is a direct quote from Ryan Schaefer last night. A shot, perhaps, at the Mika Koivu Niemi camp. Every time I bowl him, he throws a Brooklyn strike, and I'm sick of it. I might aim one Brooklyn tomorrow just to give it back a little bit, but hold on here, Ryan. This the scene early on last night. Ryan Schaefer throwing not one, but two Brooklyn strikes left of the head pin in the first three frames of his win versus O'Neill. Must be trying to emulate Mika for more on the Brooklyn controversy. Here's Randy Peterson with Schaefer. Ryan, some pretty strong words after uh, your victory last night. Why is it that Mika provides so much motivation for you? Well, you know, Mika and I are pretty good friends. Um, obviously, he's a great player. Uh, he won the Tournament of Champions this year. He won $250,000. And I haven't had the best of times. I thought I'd bowl good and, and haven't made any TV shows. So when I bowled him in a match last night and he threw a Brooklyn and it helped him beat me, I was obviously frustrated. Uh, nothing against Mika, especially in the U.S. Open. Brooklyn's happened. Um, but, you know, I, I'm just sick of it. I want things to go my way for once. Thanks, Ryan. Good luck. No problem. Mika. Mika, you, you watched the telecast last night. You obviously heard the comments from Ryan. Here's your chance to comment on what he thinks about your Brooklyn. Uh, actually, I watched that, and I'm really happy he remembers me to beat him. him. So I did something right. Uh, today, I let my bowling ball do the speaking either side of headpin. All right, now respectfully changing gears, you are the first player in PBA history to make the telecast in all four majors in one season. Is that a big advantage for you? Uh, I don't know if it's any advance. I, I don't get any extra pins for that, but if I keep bowling good today, make a good shot, stay in the game, I have a good chance. Thanks, Mika. Good luck. The number four seed is a four-time PBA Tour champion. Former Rookie of the Year and Steve Nagy Sportsmanship Award winner from Horseheads, New York, Ryan Schaefer. This the 12th televised appearance at a major for Ryan Schaefer. Has never won a major. 
four times has been a runner-up five times. He's come in third twice. He's come in fourth. He is your four seed right now. Leaves the 3-6-10, a little left of target there. But not a Brooklyn effort. <laughs> I was wondering when you were going to go there with the uh, Brooklyn. But again, you know, like Ryan said, Brooklyn's happened in the U.S. Open because of the tremendously difficult oil pattern. You don't have to miss target by very much to go Brooklyn. Push. Gets the push, gets the spare, takes a seat. And now the introductions for Mika Korvuniemi. The number three seed won a quarter million dollars at the PBA Tournament of Champions, owns nine career PBA titles with three majors, including the 2001 U.S. Open. From Heartland, Michigan, representing Finland, Major Mika Korvuniemi. And Randy, those three major titles, enough to get him down the road into the PBA Hall of Fame. Yeah, without question. Nine titles, three majors. He's a lock. No Brooklyn there. Nothing but a pocket strike there for Mika Koigu Niemi. He won the Tournament of Champions a couple weeks ago, and there it is, front and center in his trophy case. He took this picture on his new cell phone before he came out here to the U.S. Open, showed it to you and I last night and said, here's my trophy case. I have room for U.S. Open. <laughs> <laughs> he may have to do some shuffling to find room in there. It's pretty crowded. There is a, a look at the U.S. Open championship hardware. He's going to need to build an addition. His career is far from over. There's going to be a lot more trophies going up on the mantle. Something to watch throughout the telecast. I want you to watch the dark board down lane, the rangefinder right there. That's the tenth board at 40 feet. The players were, will use that to try to get their bowling ball out of the pocket. And it's a great reference point to, to watch throughout the telecast. A little right or left of that, players have a chance to get to the pocket. But again, the margin for error, not very, not very wide at the U.S. Open typically. And depending on how this oil pattern breaks down and the way the players practiced will determine just how higher scores are going to be today. Again, Ryan, like last night, having some early issues with his approach and his footing. Yeah, you're right. We saw the same thing last night, and it was early on. Ryan struggled mightily. The match looked like it was completely out of hand. Bill O'Neill throws a, throws a four-bagger early, but what a turn of events late. Took two frames to turn that match around, and they were both open frames by O'Neill. Here's Schaefer in the second, so he goes spare, spare. And here is a look at the weapons that Ryan Schaefer has at his disposal today. Going with the uh, strongest ball in his arsenal, the Virtual Gravity Nano. Playing a little bit farther left than Mika Koivuniemi. Players move in when they're trying to find hold on a flat oil pattern. strike for Schaefer. Uh, yeah, a Brooklyn strike. Brooklyn trip six. Huge break. Not very well liked by his opponent, I promise you. strike 
from Koi Buniemi there in the third. And here's a look at the Big Fins arsenal today. Mission 250K. Brand new ball. That's, of course, a reference to the 250K he pocketed by winning the TOC a couple weeks back in Vegas. Interesting. He didn't say anything or comment after throwing the conventional strike. Jacks from Major Mika. I mean, he's so focused. It, it doesn't matter what his opponent does. He really feels it. Nobody can beat him. As good as he's bowling, take a look again down lane, that range finder, that bowling ball, about a half a board or half an inch right of that range finder at 40 feet. And that's the zone that you want to look for with Mika's bowling ball each and every time down the lane. Mika's double. And that's huge. That's taking advantage of the Brooklyn strike. He doubles up. Cuts Mika's lead to one. <clears throat> no issues with the approach on that shot, Rob. You see him coming in a little light switch zone and shreds the rack. You notice his bowling ball down at that range finder is actually to the inside part. And the reason being, he's playing more angle. Farther left on the approach, farther left at the arrows, farther left down lane. Hold it. Jesus. Three, six. Shows just how far left of the range So the last shot, we saw him just a board inside of the range finder down lane. Watch this shot here. Oh, throwing it there. That's a good three boards left. And quite honestly, on this oil pattern, no chance of holding line and getting into the pocket. We'll talk more about the oil pattern. Our lumber liquidators know the wood next segment. Schaefer takes care of that one. And to the left of the bowlers is an empty lane, which has a, a carpet on it, Randy, which shows you the breakdown of the oil on the lane. So. Our amateurs out there can get a better look at exactly what the pros are dealing with. You see it there on the far left. Just an ocean of blue. Which means? Wait for it. It's coming. <laughs> Don't tease me like that. Koivu Niemi in the fifth. Three in a row. He's just magnificent thus far in managing his game. Every ball in the pocket. Just a flat 10 there in the second frame, but again, just showing you his versatility and his talent, being able to manage his game in such a manner to where he's pured the first five shots here at the U.S. Open. Mika's wife and daughters in attendance just flew in today for this from Michigan. What a great shot. Mika Koivuniemi working on three in a row. Rod, he just cures this one. Watch this. Six pin just wraps around the ten. Mika shows his disgust because he's like, hey, threw that so good. I deserve all ten. Nine spares are how you win the U.S. Open. Nine spares are okay. Have you ever wondered what Koibu Miami actually means in Finnish? Put down your Finnish to English dictionary, Randy. I'm going to tell you on the backside, my friend. Tight one early on here in our first match of the day. Ryan Schaefer, Mika Koibu Niemi fighting for the right to take on two seed Tommy Jones. Time now for our weekly Lumber Liquidators Know the Wood segment. The 42 foot U.S. Open oil pattern is the toughest, nastiest lubricity the players have faced all season long. Why so tough, you ask? 
Look at this ocean of blue. This is solid oil from gutter to gutter. This is a flat one-to-one -one ratio oil pattern, meaning that all 39 boards are oiled exactly the same. What does that mean? Simple. Hit your target with the right amount of velocity and revolutions or pay the price. The U.S. Open oil pattern is all about shot making. Thank you, as always, for your knowledge, Randy. I told you it was coming. Patience is a virtue. It's not one of my strengths. Ryan Schaefer down 12 as he gets up to close out the sixth. strike of the afternoon for Schaefer. And Rob, Mika Koivuniemi had the choice of starting lane. He chose to have Ryan Schaefer start the match to force Ryan to throw the first shot after the commercial break. Well, Ryan Schaefer stepped up and pured one right there, my yeah, friend. That strategy didn't quite work out for Mika, but Mika in good shape early on. Four strikes, two spares through six as we begin the seventh. Schaefer down a dozen. issues again, but he was able to get that one down for his second double. Yeah, it looked like he was ice skating up there and uh, somehow found a way to direct that ball online. Looked like he made an adjustment after the fifth frame where he went high leaving the 3-6. It looked like he moved a little bit deeper. Nice adjustment for Ryan Schaefer and now it's a two-pin match. Mika Koibuniemi through six frames, absolutely perfect in the pocket, four strikes and two ten pins. Back on the strike train is Major Mika. All the time we've been spending with Mika this year in our production meetings for the television shows, we've learned a lot of finish. We've learned that Lade is carry. Right? Latte. Latte is carry. And Something like that. Kato is strike. Kato. So we asked him yesterday, well, what does Koivu Niemi mean? And it translates Koivu to birch tree and Niemi to peninsula. And then Mika would just be, you know, Mike. Mike. Right? <laughs> so here's Mike, birch tree, peninsula, <laughs> stepping up in the eighth, working on a strike in the seventh. Mike, birch tree, peninsula. I think I like Mika Koivu Niemi a schmidge better. You know, it's funny when we interview him, he doesn't give up a whole lot about why he's so successful or been so successful this season, but I'm going to give you a couple right now. Great balance at the foul line. His arm swing is just as pure as, as anything I've ever seen in the sport in terms of the direction of it. His, his, his arm swing is just beautiful. His body position at the foul line for a big guy, he's perfectly balanced. He's got his weight over his left knee. And then... He's got a great mind. He's really confident right now. 7-10 oh. left by Schaefer. Circle this one. This may be where the tight match is broken open. Well, if he wants to stay in this match, he's going to have to become the fourth player in the history of bowling on television to convert the 7-10 split. I've made the 7-10 split in this building. It can be made here. It's after the 10. No dice. Open frame. First of the match for Schaefer. Down 26 now. Now he must somehow find a way to gather and come back and strike out to have a chance in this match. If he does strike out, he'll shoot 223. Mika Koivuniemi is already at 229. Back on the strike train is Schaefer. And again, go back to last night. Just about everybody in this building rode off Ryan Schaefer with the start he had and the burst that Bill O'Neill had coming out of the gate. 
Schaefer was able to claw his way back in there in advance to today's show. And again, Brian Schaefer, no stranger to the majors, just stranger to the winner's circle. Has never won a major, just four PBA Tour titles on his resume. Mika looking for three in a row. This would be taking a nail and getting ready to put it in the coffin. Well, this shot is just way left. A, a little over anxious, I think, Rob, because a strike there in the ninth frame and then good count in the tenth, the match is over. But you can see just how well inside that rangefinder he is. But the break is only leaving the three pin. I mean, that's huge. Remember just a couple of weeks ago at the Masters against Tom Hess, Mika looked like he was in control and then inexplicably came, came up with a couple of shots that went right through the nose, leaving huge splits. So Mika remains clean with a spare in the ninth, the lead at 25 as we begin at the 10th. Koivu Niemi won the 2000 Masters, won the 01 U.S. Open, and won this year's version of the Tournament of Champions. And all he needs is eight spare eight to move on. Head on over to PBA.com right now to submit your More of What Matters to You fan question. Brought to you by the makers of One a Day. Directed to our number one seed today, Norm Duke. If your question is picked, you'll be recognized on air. And Norm will answer it live. Big fist pump for the big fin. This match is over. This is a great shot here when he needed it most. See that ball that time just right of the range finder. The great hand gets the ball to tip ever so slightly down the lane. And then the nice pin carry. Strike number eight for Major Mika. First title he ever won on the PBA Tour was a major. He's looking for his second major of the season and his second ever U.S. Open title. Chris Barnes knew what he was talking about a few months ago when he said Mika was bowling better than anybody on the planet, and he's proving it. And Mika Corvumiemi will move on to take on your two-seed Tommy Jones. Jones, the 30th greatest player in PBA history. The 32-year-old South Carolina native is on deck. The two-seed gunning for his second career U.S. Open crown. So for the third time in his career, Ryan Schaefer will finish fourth at a major. Mika Koivu Niemi moves on courtesy of a 14-pin victory. Today's Just for Men hair color live forward moment took place right here. In 2008, Norm Duke qualified third for the stepladder finals. Beat Doug Kent, Chris Loeschetter, then taking on that man, Mika Koivu Niemi, in the title match. Stormin' Norman would take it with a 224-216 victory, his first U.S. Open victory. We're trying to live forward today to capture his second U.S. Open title. That's the Monk Mattingly Open right here. Norm Duke, your number one seed, awaiting the winner of our upcoming match between two seed Tommy Jones and Mika Koivu Niemi. Right now, we send it down lane side. Randy with a special guest, Steve Johnson, the president, the executive director of the Bowling for Fighters Association of America. Yeah, hey, thanks, Rob. And, uh, you know, I hear a rumor there's a, some kind of youth movement going on, and that was evident this week. Uh, we actually had a young man from Indiana, 17-year-old, 
uh, that made match play. Tell us about your initiative and what your company is trying to do to grow the sport of all. Well, it was, great. it was great. EJ did a great job this weekend, 17 years old. But the youth movement in bowling is, is incredible right now. There's over 20 million youth that come into our centers, and they're exposed through in-school bowling, high school, collegiate, through the junior levels, through Bowlopolis, all the different things. But the exciting thing is we're coming out with a brand of Little League Bowling called USA Bowling. Uh, not launched yet, but stay tuned because it's coming. Sounds exciting. Now, i got to put you on the spot. Your prediction. Who wins today? You know, it's a, it's a tough one. It's hard. How can you bet against Mika? I think he's won everything, but you know, you got Norm in the end, so it's one of those two. Thanks, Steve. My pleasure. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, thank you. Coming up a little later tonight on ESPN, a loaded one from the Eastern Conference. Carmelo Anthony, Amari Stoudemire, and the new look Knicks have to prove that they compete with the league's best as they clash with LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and the rest of the Miami Heat in South Florida. NBA Sunday on ESPN 8 Eastern, also available online at ESPN3.com. Tommy Jones at one point was the most successful televised bowler in history, but his look on TV has changed as of late. Who does he blame? Yeah, me. We'll talk about it when we return. Sold out crowd here at the Brunswick Zone Carolier, North Brunswick, New Jersey. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson here with you for the semifinal match of the 68th Lumber Liquidators U.S. Open. Mika Koivu Niemi, a 236, 222 winner over Ryan Schaefer. Mika starting this match. Tommy Jones, the higher seed, he gets the choice. He has Mika start the match so that Tommy Jones can finish on the left lane. He likes the left lane better. That's Tommy Jones' strategy. See if it pays off. Two qualifiers, a former PBA rookie and player of the year, the 2006 U.S. Open champion from Greenville, South Carolina, T.J. Tommy Jones. 13-time titleist, including two majors. One here in 06 for the U.S. Open title, and then the next year took the 07 TOC. Has never been a runner-up at a major. the late collapse. That looked like a big four for a beat, and now just the 10 pin, or make that the six pin left. Well, and you, you called it perfectly, Rob. Right through the heart, big four standing for a minute there. It looked like the 10 pin was going to fall into the six. <laughs> Jones quickly hops off and Digs into his bag. Going for a bevel knife. Going to make a little adjustment to thumb hole, maybe some tape. Nope, he's scratching the shoe. Interesting, he takes a little piece of sandpaper that he keeps in his pocket to rough up the thumb hole on just about every strike shot. Another thing interesting, he's using the same ball that Mika Koivuniemi is using. Is that legal? As far as I'm concerned, it is. Tape. Tommy Jones not feeling real comfortable, and it couldn't happen at a worse time. Start of the match in a major. But he's a veteran. He's been here before. He's going to tape up. There was no panic in that tone. No. No sweat, no sprinting, no running. He's been here before. But that is the second time he's gone to his bag already. Check out the rangefinder down line. You see it's a good three boards left of that. And the result is a Brooklyn. You know, there's oil patterns that you bowl on at home. You miss three boards to the left, and the ball just goes dead flush because of the oil or the amount of heavy concentration of oil in the middle part of the lane. Not on the U.S. Open oil pattern, my friend. 
Nine spare, nine spare for Jones to start off his semifinal match versus the hottest bowler on the planet. Mika Koivu Niemi was on top of the player of the year conversation coming into this week. Bill O'Neill making the TV show as the sixth seed and getting a win yesterday. There's a lot of conversation. Should O'Neill win the U.S. Open title? Then it's a two-man race. Not anymore. This is Mika's player of the year year. Randy, quick, get out the finish to English dictionary. He just said something. He just said, I can't believe you threw one like that and then pay the ultimate penalty by getting five. I didn't trip out the big four like Tommy did. Where's my break? He said all of that that quickly and finished? Yes. It's very efficient language. So a ugly leave here for Mika in the second. Yeah, Greek Church loses a lot of count, falls behind by 16 immediately after just two frames. And really, Rob, a, a flawless performance in game one where he shot 236. And, and you know, you, you don't really predict 220s and 230s. Both players really bowled nicely in that first opening match. All of a sudden now, Mika finds himself trailing for the first time today. Those are pretty high numbers for what this pattern has been throwing out at the pros. And, and Rob, the reason for that is because the players, remember, they get practice prior to going on the air. And depending on where they practice, they can actually burn up a little bit of a friction zone, and that's what happened. That's a great shot. We saw Norm Duke in practice playing that second arrow. Mika was right there. So was Tommy Jones for a good portion of practice. First strike for Jones. And we had a fun talk with Tommy Jones yesterday. He's very loose, very comfortable, seems very confident where he is right now. And at one point, you know, nobody won more on television than Tommy Jones. His career TV winning percentage of 73%, second best all time. At one point, he had won 15 matches in a row on television. And what does he do? He hasn't won on TV for a while. He started barking at me saying, I was good on TV till you started hand-bowing it up, Stone. I keep losing on TV. I'm calling you out. I'm going to call out Tommy Jones here in a second. Hold on. Oh, Nasty no. for Jones. Just to conclude the story real quick, he won in March of 08 in West Babylon, New York. I was a part of that podcast. He has won under my regime. Are you sure? We double and triple checked. But the nasty break here for Jones. Yeah, anytime you leave a pocket split, it's no fun for anyone, especially for the player that leaves it. And quite frankly, he was working on a strike, trying to take advantage of the open frame by Mika Koivuniemi. So now just a two-pin lead, and Mika Koivuniemi can now step up in the fourth frame, throw a strike, and take the lead. Coming right at you, right into your living room. Throwing a lot of junk around. And with that hit, he takes the lead. Born in Finland, moved to the U.S. in the mid-90s, went back to Finland, and then came back in the summer of 02 to the U.S. Lives in Heartland, Michigan with his family. Mika. I think one of the most impressive things when you watch Mika 
is how well he stabilizes his upper body. Right here, you see how the head doesn't come up and out? It just kind of stays down, and I think that's one of his biggest attributes. Pressure swings to the Jones camp here in the fifth, coming off an open frame. Catches a little break there after the not-so-friendly four-night split in the fourth. Take a look at our Bear Trusted Pain Relief Replay, brought to you by the makers of Bear Aspirin. <sighs> Exhale on that one. He needed a strike badly there in the fifth. Here he is in the sixth. Right off the 4-9, really? 4-9, I'm losing feet, and I get it angled, and it doesn't hook. Well, off the 4-9, he makes a little bit of an adjustment here. It looks like it's really? just a little wide down the lane, and, and you, yeah. it, it almost looked like his bowling ball wiggled when it came off the end of the pattern. Yeah. Takes care of the 2-8, leaves the 10. Jones down 30, and Jones with a planned trip to the doctors on Tuesday. We'll tell you why when our coverage of the 68th edition of the Lumber Liquidators U.S. Open returns. Before this match, 2 seed Tommy Jones elected to end this match on the left lane, but it's that left lane, Randy, that's causing him all kinds of issues all of a sudden. That's where we're trying to get it to. I Mika's mean, ball's getting farther right. I mean, the one that I got in did that, and it checked in 4-9, and then I thought it threw that one really good. There's nothing I can do. I don't have another ball, and that's it. I mean, these, they just don't, they're, they, I don't know. It's just the difference of where it picks up. And, Rob, you make a great point there. Absolutely right. He chose to finish on the left lane. And it's back-to-back -back open frames on that lane. So he saw something he really liked and practiced, and now it's gone. That is how quickly things can evaporate here at the U.S. Open. to 40. Rerack here and head on over to PBA.com. Check out Extra Frame, PBA's online video subscription service. Great coverage throughout this U.S. Open on PBA Extra Frame. And you can sign up using their link over on PBA.com. Looking for five in a row is Mika in the seventh. That's a big one. Yahtzee! Drops the nickel, and Mika up by 50. Mika Koivuniemi performing at an incredibly high level. There it is again. Right on the spot, 10 in the pit, five in a row. Getting closer and closer to a Koivu Niemi Duke rematch. Those two met at the 08 US Open Championship game. Late kick of the 10. Then you try to make it hook and you do that. Jones a slight break and now as soon as you try to comes make it a spare hook. shot. And Randy, the spares have not been easy for Tommy Jones lately because of a hip issue. He has a doctor's appointment on Tuesday to see what can be done. A recent MRI discovered a bone spur rubbing on a tendon. Most likely, at a minimum, they're going to shave off that bone spur, but he was telling us yesterday they may actually have to move the tendon as well to relieve the pain. And Jones in a lot of pain right now, down 50 as we begin the eighth. Yeah, surgery is inevitable. He has to have something done 
Um, right now, it's just pain management, getting through it, and he's done a pretty good job of that this week. Oh, nice. Second 7-10 we've seen today. One from Schaefer, and now one from Jones. Just two strikes in this semifinal match for Jones. Anybody think this is going to go hard? <laughs> Well, let's see, uh, and again, I, I've seen the 7-10 made in this building quite a few times. Tommy Jones can certainly throw it hard enough. Could this be the fourth time ever? Mm. Punishes the 10, leaves the 7. Koivu Niemi, a couple years back, was voted the 49th greatest bowler in PBA history. Wonder where he would stand with a revote today. <laughs> Amika still in good shape to move on to our title match. Our number one seed, Norm Duke, fan favorite. Hall of Famer waiting in the wings. And the intensity level of that title match between those two is really going to be through the roof. We, we know what an intense guy Norm Duke is for a major. And Mika has just been stoic this season every time he's been on television. Another great doubleheader of college basketball action tomorrow night on ESPN. Figgy showdown. Notre Dame taking on Villanova at 7, and then we head out west. Number 5, Texas, upset yesterday as they take on Kansas State at 9 p.m. Eastern. Big Monday presented by Bud Light. Both of those games also available online at ESPN3.com and on your phone. Over Miami in the night, back on the strike train. He really is making this oil pattern look simple. But it's really hard to realize or understand just how difficult this oil pattern is. And you look at Tommy Jones. I mean, Tommy Jones has got 120 in the eighth. Mika is already in the 220s, can shoot 240. Tommy Jones is bowling 160. Tommy Jones is one of the best players on tour struggling on this oil pattern. Just goes to show you where Mika is and what level he's bowling at. Right now. Third strike for Jones. Unfortunately, he has two open frames to go with those strikes. And all three strikes coming on the right lane. He shifts now to the left to close out his match. And he didn't get a whole lot of breaks in this game. Missed a couple of opportunities, a couple of bad breaks. 4-9, pocket 7-10, solid 9, all on the lane. He chose to finish up. You know, it was encouraging in talking with Tommy. He said, man, he really feels like he's bowling much better now. He bowled great this week. You know, asking him, what, you know, what... What's, what are the secrets to doing well at a U.S. Open? He's a, he's a former champion at the U.S. Open. He says, this tournament's 80% mental. Stay on an even keel mentally. Physically, he's obviously throwing his back. And that's good to see. So, Tommy Jones, his U.S. Open is complete. Mika will be moving on. strike for Major Mika. He moves on. Well, a few years back, that man, Norm Duke, was voted the seventh greatest in PBA history with a major title today and a revote. It'll be interesting to see where Duke would stand now. Duke versus Mika for the U.S. Open. It's coming up. Randy Peterson welcoming you back to ESPN's continuing coverage of the fourth and final major of the season. Mika Koivu-Niemi dismantling Tommy Jones in our semifinal match. 
Up next for him, Norm Duke. Mika in match number one, courtesy of our Geico Championship recap. Took care of four seed Ryan Schaefer. Mika with four strikes in the first five frames. Ryan Schaefer leaving the nasty 7-10 in the eighth. Koivu Niemi with strikes in the seventh, eighth. Two more in the tenth for good measure. He rolls comfortably. Then, your three seed taking on two seed Tommy Jones. Mika, five in a row. Strikes the big one. Frames three through seven. And this one was hardly ever in doubt. 241, 158. The win goes to Koivu Niemi. So, Mika, your three seed, continues to move on up the step ladder. Up next, one versus three for the U.S. Open title. Time now for our More of What Matters to You fan question of the day, brought to you by the makers of One a Day and Randy Lingside, standing by with the question for Norm. Thanks, Rob. This question comes from Millie Sims of Satellite, Satellite Beach, Florida. Cut it out. Not far from uh, where Norm and I live. Norm, what mental and physical strategy will you use today to give you an edge? Well, mentally, I'm just trying not to freak out, to tell you the truth. It's a big day. It's hard. It's been a long wait. Mika's on a roll. Uh, physically, hey, I'm fine. Physically, it's just about bowling. I've been doing this for 30 years, so I'm all right with that. Uh, mentally, i got to hold it together. Thanks, Norm. Good luck. You're welcome. Love Norm Duke and live television. Duke, your number one seed, set to take on your three seed, Mika Koivuniemi. Your title match uninterrupted. When we return, can Mika get his second major of the year? Can Norm earn his seventh major of his Hall of Fame career? Find out with us. Norm Duke sits just one win away from his seventh major title and second U.S. Open crown. For the 46-year-old, it's all about the majors in this stage of his Hall of Fame career, and none means more than the U.S. Open. Oh, the U.S. Open, baby! And we're about 20 minutes away from deciding the winner of this year's edition of the Lumber Liquidators U.S. Open live from North Brunswick, New Jersey. Rob Stone and PBA Hall of Famer Randy Peterson with you. Duke, your number one seed, takes a seat. Mika Koivu Niemi will bat lead off in our title match. This the third match of the afternoon for Koivu Niemi. Took care of Ryan Schaefer, 236, 222, and then just dispatched Tommy Jones. A 241 158 score. The tournament leader owns 33 Lumber Liquidators PBA Tour titles, including six majors, two-time PBA Player of the Year, and PBA Hall of Famer from Claremont, Florida, 2008 U.S. Open champion, Norm Duke. <laughs> to me, this is the hardest thing right here, Rob. Norm's been watching all day, coming off, coming off the bench, cold, First shot on television. Mika's got all the momentum going in his camp. Lee's double wood. It is not easy being a number one seed. And I know that sounds sounds odd, but the numbers have backed it up lately. Percentage-wise, the two seed has seemingly had more success in title matches as of late than the number one seed. And primarily because they get a longer look at the lanes in front of him. Norm Duke is the one seat, gets some practice shots, and then it is game on. He's coming in cold, essentially. Mika has two games under his belt. The nerves are gone. He's got a nice blueprint of the oil pattern, how the lanes have broken down. Norm has to do all of that in two shots. And he's just used his two shots as he works on his balls. We take a look at the arsenal for Duke today. And we just listen to him breathe, trying to keep from hyperventilating, sucking in oxygen, and just trying to get himself composed and quiet the nerves.
strike. The nice part about what he's doing, though, is he's going with his bread and butter shot, that real soft hand at the bottom of the swing and a pretty straight direct line to the pocket. Fipen didn't know which way to fall. It got slapped silly. Norm Duke still at age. How old is he now? 44? Six. 46. Still throwing 16 pounds out here. Pretty impressive. Koivu Niemi steps up to close out the second. He has never beaten Duke. 0 for 3 on television is Mika versus your number one seed, Norm Duke. We saw both Ryan Schaefer and Tommy Jones play farther to the inside part of the lane than did, or than Mika's playing, and both were unsuccessful at beating him. Norm Duke, however, playing right on top of where Mika's playing. Strike spare for Team Cuevo Niemi. made five U.S. Open shows, three of them here at Carrier Lanes. What? Now, Mika, though, does have a victory over Norm this week in match play. You can see those scores, 199, 165. They were just absolutely brutal in match play. And the they you were referring to, not Mika and not Norm, the lanes. The lanes. Oil pattern. The conditions. Norm Duke can really move up several lists with a victory today. A win would give him his 34th career title, would tie him for fourth most with the legendary Mark Roth, who we're going to see next week. In Buffalo, he gets a win today. It's also his seventh major to tie him for fourth with Walter Way Williams Jr. Two of the best going at it for the U.S. Open title. And this is shaping up to be just an exciting match early on. Both players have found pocket. Norm Duke still trying to manage the nerves. He's such a great champion. He knows how to do that. He has a great blueprint here at Carolier Lanes. That's why he's been so successful in past U.S. Opens here. And he said, you know what? For the most part, I know where not to play. for Duke. That's a huge, huge break. He got away with one right there. He stole one. Got a little fast, missed it just a pitch at the bottom of the screen. See that hand go left. That's a miss right at the bottom. That ball tips up nicely. What a huge break. And again, remember, it doesn't take much on this oil pattern. See where his bowling ball was down the lane at 40 feet. This ball goes high, leaving the 3 6 10. Well, it looks pretty good right there because Norm Duke is mirroring where Mika is playing on the lanes. The oil pattern is going to break down faster. Now it's time for Mika to move towards the middle part of the lane and open it. This tough US Open oil pattern up just a bit. Going after the 3 6 10. Takes care of it. Remains clean in our title match. You know, Rob, I think the other common denominator when you see the players that that have success at U.S. Opens, they're also extremely, extremely good spare shooters. Back in 2008, Mika was the top seed here at the U.S. Open and lost to Duke. Hoping to turn the tables on him here in 2011. Mm. 
looked like he went with a little more speed there to try to hold the ball on line, and unfortunately, it hit flat. Take a look, six pin, instead of going up and around, it kind of goes into the sidewall and lays dead right in the channel. Right now, Mika making the calculations necessary. Expect him to make some adjustments here in the next couple of frames. Three spares, two strikes in the title match for Mika. Warren Fieldler, general manager here, Brunswick Zone, Carolier. Well, these guys do this tournament right when we're here in New Jersey. They have got it figured out. Great fans here in Jersey and North Brunswick. Didn't like it. Way right of target as he was going for four in a row. Replay that his shot. Well, you see, Norm just uh, called the tournament director. He's going to tape up the thumb hole, but it looks like he completely loses this, loses the bowling ball right at the bottom of the swing, and he knows it. Now, at, as soon as it leaves his hand, he's just hoping to leave himself a makeable spare. We saw it last night with Bill O'Neill only needing a mark in the 10th frame to advance to today's telecast, how quickly things can change. Norm gets off the little shaky start, leaving the 2-8 in the first frame, comes back with three strikes in a row. Looks like he's getting ready to string a bunch of strikes together, and all of a sudden he loses one at the bottom. And now it's an open frame. Tape again. With a win today, Norm Duke would earn his 34th career tour title, tying him for fourth most with Mark Roth. Next week, we will be in Cheektowaga, just outside of Buffalo, for the Mark Roth Plastic Ball Championship live coverage Sunday at 1. And then the RV continues as we head west to the Woodland Bowl, Indianapolis, Indiana, for the Go RVing Dick Weber PBA playoffs coverage of that one begins Sunday. March 27th, 2.30 Eastern on ESPN. Let's play the rest of the way. Robert, there's one thing I do know. Open frames are hard to overcome at the United States Open. Mika has only had one. Was able to bail that out with a five-bagger. You got to get that right. If you don't get it right, you can't get out of it. What's he referring to there? Take it out. The, the position of the tape, he doesn't like the position of the tape. He's got to get it right, otherwise he can't get out of it the way he wants to get out of it. Talking about his release point. So a spare after that open frame for Duke, and he's waiting by the ball return to take that ball and do some more doctoring. And now it's Mika's turn to get Mika, though, just two strikes, three spares, no doubles here. As he begins his effort in the sixth, down six. Remember the last time on the right lane, he went high, leaving the 3 6 10. That time almost a solid nine, but all 10 go down. And Mika, Mika looking to. Very few have won multiple U.S. Open titles. Pete Weber, who was in the hunt for a while, sitting there with four. Walter Ray with two. Did Odell Ballard Jr. has been very active today, doing some coaching. There's your adjustment. There's your new leader. 
Mika Koivu Niemi wins a quarter of a million dollars at Tournament of Champions. Oh, what was it, about a month ago? And now looking to pocket another 80 grand, hence the nickname Major Mika. This would be his fourth major title of his career. Duke will not go down without a fight, though. Here he is, bottom of the seventh. You're right, Rob. Norm Duke's like a, like a badger when you get him cornered. You know, you don't want any part of that. And, and he's not going to go down without throwing some haymakers. I don't think he doesn't have the crowd behind him as well. You get that emotion, you get that energy going, you get that focus, you get that reason again to win. This shot here is just spectacular. Now he needs to summons that exact same shot right here in the eighth frame and regain the lead. Well, the eight pin is the only true tap in bowling because that ball was perfect in the pocket, and it couldn't have come at a worse possible time for Norm Duke. So Koivu Niemi will step up with the chance, put the wraps on a three-bagger here, and Mika... Guaranteed to go over 300,000 in earnings this season. 250K by winning the Tournament of Champions will go a long way towards getting you towards 300. Mika takes a re-rack by himself a little time. He wants this shot to be perfect. Working on a double can increase his lead to 14. In double digits. Look how big that eight pin is now that North Duke just left. Mika with one more strike will be in the high 220s. Now the best Norm Duke can shoot, 225. Big shot coming up here in ninth frame. and a mark in the 10th frame, and he's going to capture his second U.S. Open and that beautiful trophy. Norm Duke has to strike out to put any kind of pressure on him. He needs all of them right here, ninth and 10th frame. Again, how huge that solid eight was in the eighth, because if he strikes there, he could have struck out to shoot 245. Just about everybody on the PBA Tour would vote Norm Duke to put him in this position. He knows all about dropping pressure strikes. And there's one. Got to have the next two. He's got to get himself into the 220s and force the mark. Remember what happened last night with Bill O'Neill. Bill O'Neill looked like he was on his way to advancing to today's telecast, needed just a mark, went through the nose, leaving the 4-6-7 to lose to Ryan Schaefer. There's two in a row. Remember, Ryan Schaefer got up, struck out in the 10th frame to force the issue on Bill O'Neill. Norm Duke looking to do the exact same thing, but he has to have the next hit right here. There it is. 
is, Rob. More effort here for Duke in the tenth. Mika sitting for a long time. And remember, Norm's finishing two frames, and one of those frames being the tenth frame. Three shots he's throwing here. Sometimes that has an effect on an opponent, almost like a commercial break. Woo! He needed a close draw. He slammed that. The four in a row to finish for Duke. He's on the bench with a 225, and he will sit and learn his fate. He strikes here. There's what Mika has to do. The lead at four. Duke applying the late pressure. He's got to make it. He's a good spare shooter, but he's got to convert the 10 pin right here. You heard him yell carry in finish. Couldn't get that 10 pin to drop. Open crowd to Norm Duke. Our return of events. You knew the score. Mika only needed a mark. What went through your mind when he got up in the tenth frame? Well, I just lost the U.S. Open. And uh, not from, of course, the ninth and 10th frames, Randy, but because of uh, the errors in, in the middle of the game. You know, I know this is the U.S. Open condition. There's all kinds of things that happen. Heck, I was watching TV last night at about 11 o'clock when Ryan Schaefer made it. And uh, I feel for Bill O'Neill, and he went through almost something as devastating. Not quite. I'm sure not quite. Uh, I feel for Mika. I really do. What does this win mean to you at this point in your career? That's a question that I'd have to be asked in a week or two. Uh, right now, you know, of course, it means the world. Right now, I, my thoughts are with my family. Because it's hard for them, you know, to watch in the 10th. Sorry about this, but... It, heart goes out to Mika. Thanks, Norm. Congratulations. Major amount of emotions 
on both sides of this toy title match. Kobe Niemi head in hand still. Norm Duke kisses another major title. We'll be back to Jersey to wrap it up after this. We did it, young man. The final scoreboard will read 225-216. It does not do this match justice. Mika Koibuniemi needing a spare in the 10th, unable to drop it, and Norm Duke from the bench wins the U.S. Open. Again, Koibuniemi goes right of the 10-pin and drops to the wood, and Norm Duke stunned as many of us were at the result. Shocking. It's truly shocking. The last thing you would think would happen would be Mika whipping a 10-pin. But here's the thing. Norm Duke gets up ninth and 10th frame after leaving a solid eight on a strike. Shows up, shows the part of the champion by striking out and putting this kind of pressure on Mika. Mika steps up. Great shot to leave the ring in 10, but he fails to convert. Absolutely shocking end to this U.S. Open. Duke closes with the four-bagger to take yet another major. Next week, we are outside of Buffalo, the Mark Roth Plastic Ball Championship live coverage, 1 Eastern on ESPN. Norm Duke, career title, number 34. Major title, number seven. His second U.S. Open comes in dramatic fashion. A conclusion bowling fans may never forget. Woo. 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 A nasty flurry at the end. And Norm Duke wins it as Mika misses it. For Randy Peterson and our entire crew, I'm Rob Stone. So long from New Jersey. Congratulations to that man, Norm Duke.